So, now do you want to come to my room and play? Hmm? Chris, I've got supercells forming over Clark County, Nevada. Wind speed's exploding. What the hell is going on out there? Up, oh, easy, Tiger. I gotta use the little girl's room. This thing's dropping funnels. Issue an alert. Get Andy on the phone, tell him we need him. So, what plays in Vegas stays in Vegas, right, baby? Is everything all right in there, honey? See what I see, Herb? Holy cow, Marge. Maybe somebody blew up Vegas. Ooh. Look, Marge, there are hundreds. Check those Dopplers again. Yeah, it's weird. Signature looks more like Tornado Alley than the Far West. Damage reports put it at F5. Almost up to Oklahoma City in 99. What are the odds of tornadoes hitting Vegas? <laughs> About the same as getting dealt five royal flushes in a row. Which is no excuse, people. We should have been on top of this. Got to get these warnings out faster. Heat waves, droughts, wildfires, tornadoes where they're not supposed to be. I'm getting out of this place in the nick of time. Hey, you said that, not me. Are you sure you really want this job? I go where I'm assigned. You know what makes a really great forecaster, Chris? No, but I'm afraid you're about to tell me. That's right. Instinct. Well, I'll take reason over instinct. Uh -huh. Reason, my ass. What's reasonable about tornadoes in Las Vegas? See, it's balancing the heavy stuff with the lighter stuff. What heavy stuff? You know, tornadoes are ripping apart Las Vegas, and we're doing stories about people dipping their feet in public fountains. You know, since Walt Ashley has arrived, this has turned into Chicago, the lighter side. So why do you think he just doesn't hire a separate lifestyle reporter? Because he's got me under contract. And doesn't he realize that this is a crucial point in history? Not just for the people of Chicago or, or the country, but the planet. Okay, wait, hold on. Let me just get that soap box from the truck. Shut up. Let's go shoot. As we begin another hot and muggy morning, 
I'm standing in front of the public fountain outside City Hall, which citizens have converted into a bathing pool to try and keep cool in this seemingly endless heat wave. Police have relaxed restrictions on public bathing, but are now facing a new challenge, trying to keep kids from jimmying open the city's numerous fire hydrants. In the meantime, the Cook County Coroner's Office has confirmed there were 11 more deaths yesterday due to the heat. And according to weather watchers, there doesn't seem to be any break in what will be our fourth straight week of temperatures over 100 degrees, which is unprecedented. Can't take for this early in the morning. I thought we could keep it at 79. Yeah, we revised the mandatory limits yesterday. Lindsay, mm -hmm. what did we say about using that blow dryer? Mom, my hair is totally frizzing. It's a choice. You can have 10 minutes of blow drying or air conditioning in your room. You can't have both. She'd blow every circuit just on frizz that hair of hers. I heard that, nerd boy. Love you too, sis. Let's just keep our cool. Unbelievable. $5 billion in damage. I mean, what's next? Blizzards in LA and then hurricanes on Lake Michigan? Walker's off the DL list. He's pitching against the Brewers. Honey, want some toast? Isn't anybody as worried about the weather as I am? He struck out 13 his last game. I almost wouldn't mind a hurricane, as long as it broke this heat wave. Whoa, 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 young lady, you're not going out of this house dressed like that. Dad, it's like a million degrees outside. And since when did the weather ever dictate teenage fashion? This is what everyone's wearing. Well, you're not. Go, go put some clothes on. Uh, Mom. Would you put on a shirt, please? Consider myself an enlightened father. By the way, have you met Eric? Who's Eric? Her new boyfriend. What happened to Alan? Alex. Alex. He was last week. <laughs> Eric's a sociopath. I'm not kidding. Can we just rewind a couple of years to before she started dating? See you later, pal. Bye, Lindsay! Power companies want to expand our use of coal to generate electricity without doing anything to counterbalance the environmental consequences. We are fast becoming a first world nation with a third world power grid. You see, now that's what we should be reporting about. Mm -hmm. The dangers posed by increasing consumption over an aging infrastructure. You know your problem is, Amy? You want to be Diane Sawyer. See, what we really need no, here Walt, is... No, some... I just want to report on the stories that matter. Well, no one tunes in to watch those stories, and what have you accomplished, huh? You know, 60 Minutes is one of the highest rated programs in TV history. Not our audience. Excuse me, our audience is the people of Chicago. We're in a competitive business. We don't get numbers and demos, we get fired. Great idea. Let's do a week-long feature on the dumbing down of local TV news. The heat, Amy. Just stay focused on the heat, okay? I'd say good morning, but that has yet to be determined. Give me a status report, Bob. Uh, we hit another max load point when everyone woke up this morning and turned on their air conditioners. Is anybody listening to our conservation requests? Sun comes up, people dial down their thermostats. It's human nature. Yeah, except in here, what is it, 90? It gets worse. At 3 a.m., Lexa reduced transmissions. 20,000 of our customers woke up without power this morning. The utility in Indianapolis had an outage. Lexa diverted power away from Midwest and gave it to them. What gives them the right to take power away from our customers? They have a contractual agreement with Lake Michigan Electric. Yeah, but that doesn't override their obligation to Midwest. We're all beholden to the same master, Mitch. That's right. One big happy family. Morning. Everybody, uh, this is Becca Kern. She's from PR at Lexa. Uh... Craig Schultz asked her to come over and advise. Only advise. I know you have your hands full. We just want to help any way we can. We have a uh, press conference at City Hall. Call me on my cell if you need me. No, 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 no. I wasn't in the movie, Twister. But I'm one of those guys, storm chaser. Been doing it 25 years. And there ain't a man on earth that'll get you closer, Mr. Yoshiko. Well, from here in Oklahoma, down to the Texas Panhandle, up to Nebraska, Kansas, South Dakota, we, uh, we average about 40 tornadoes a year. That's right, that's right. Four passengers at a time, two grand each for the week. But they'll see at least one twister touch down. No, no, I never met Helen Hunt. Well, the uh, sooner the better. Mr. Yoshiko, uh, usually spring's the best time, but uh, this summer's been pretty crazy. Could be a real record setter, tornado-wise. You can bet yours truly is going to be right in the middle of it. You hear that? 
Ah, that's the storm guards. They're saying, come watch us play. <laughs> you won't be disappointed, Miss Yoshiko. We want to assure the people of Chicago that we have sufficient power to meet the needs of all of our customers. On the rolling brownouts, there have been allegations that the poor neighborhoods are being targeted with greater frequency than the wealthier neighborhoods. Comment? Tactical voltage reductions are spread evenly throughout the system. If we were going to target neighborhoods for brownouts, the wealthier ones would top the list because they consume more. How does LexiCorp respond to our Secretary of Energy's quote that we're a first world nation with a third world power grid? Well, Lexer's in the business of generating power, not fixing the infrastructure. But we are trying to provide other services that... What about rumors that Lexer is shutting down plants to drive up what it can charge for energy? That's totally false. Plants do need to be taken offline periodically for safety checks and servicing. Right now, there's one thing that will ease our power crisis, and that's a break in the heat wave. We'll be back in a couple of days to brief you again. Thank uh, you. Can you comment, please, on the, on the evening Well, you heard it, folks. Our public utility operators won't be the ones to save us from the power crisis. They're looking to Mother Nature herself to bail them out. This is Amy Harkin reporting from City Hall. Heat wave's not their fault. They're just employees dealing with a bad situation best way they can. Oh, come on, Jace. They're putting on a happy face when the fact is the system is breaking down. Hey, you buying lunch, right? No, you just think you do. I'm, I'm on television. <laughs> you, um, you looking to buy one of these units? Because you should know there are a lot of problems with this building. No, I'm just visiting. Oh, the pregnant couple. Yeah. How did you know that? Mm -hmm. Well, they're the only other ones living in the building. You know, the owner. He's converting this place into a condo. So I heard. You know, they're really happy. <sighs> well, I am furious. Oh, really? I can't believe they're sending you on a mission when your wife is about to have a baby. We've got our people flying weather recon all over the country. There just aren't enough crews to go around. It's only a week. I'll be fine. Besides, every woman in my family delivered late on her first pregnancy. Well, and I will be checking in five times a day. Well, I'll check in ten times a day. <laughs> but you know, now that you're about to become a dad, don't you think it's time you stop being a cowboy? Amy, I know you love what you do. Jeff feels the same way about his job. I'm just thinking of the baby. Look, it isn't any more dangerous than being a commercial pilot. Oh, flying around inside hurricanes isn't dangerous. Not if you know what you're doing. I'm talking about dangerous. I saw you grill that guy at the press conference today. Do we need to worry about these rolling brownouts when we're at the hospital? No, they have backup generators. Yeah, which they've had to use a lot during this heat wave. I mean, do they have enough fuel in reserve? You really have been thinking about this. Well, that's what pilots do. We plan for contingencies. Our backup plan is for me to go to my parents in Deer Grove. They live right next door to an OBGYN. You just promised me you wait to have this baby until I get there, OK? I want to be holding your hand. Cheers to that. <laughs> Who in the hell made this coffee? Mr. Goodman. Young lady, you better understand something. We work a straight shift here, no lunch. These people survive on decent coffee. Excuse me. The first I... thing that a new assistant's got to learn is how to make a decent cup of coffee. Oh, well, I'm not the new assistant. I'm the new intern. And I didn't make the coffee. I don't even drink coffee. New intern, huh? Yes, sir. I've read your books. Yeah? Which ones? All of them. Some twice. How much did you understand? Well, I'm good with all but some parts of the chaos theory. <laughs> well, it's chaotic. <laughs> I'm just having some troubles with the butterfly effect. You mean you don't believe that a butterfly flapping his wings in the Andes can affect the weather in San Francisco? Actually, I do. I just can't imagine our being able to utilize variables on that level. Why don't you see how many variables we can utilize from this mess? Have it on my desk at 9 a.m. <sighs> Is he normally like that? Pretty much. 
He hasn't had much sleep lately. Mother Nature has been keeping him pretty busy these days. He really is sort of a legend, though, isn't he? Well, let me put it this way. When Andy started out, forecasters were still relying on their weather vanes and arthritis to tell them what was coming. Look, don't take it too personally. He's just a little pissed because the guys in Washington are putting him out to pasture. When? End of next week. Oh. Who's taking his place? I am. Oh, that's exciting. It's a job. Speaking of which, don't you have some work to do? Oh, nice work on that public bathing piece, by the way. Did you see the press conference? I did. The situation is a lot worse than they're telling us. Oh, and your source on that is? I'm developing one. I'm going to send you our latest focus group results. See, the reality is viewers want people stories, not science, not conspiracy stories. Yeah, you know what? When the power fails, it's 100 degrees, and no one has air conditioning, they're going to care about science real fast. Then give me a source, a real source. And don't go spending too much time on it, because I need you in other places. Power companies are still recovering from the damage done by Enron. But a crisis like this provides an opportunity to prove to the public we can be counted on to keep serving their needs. Nuclear energy now accounts for over 60% of the power in Illinois, and Lexer is at the forefront of developing new plants and modernizing equipment. Public utilities like Midwest must be compelled to rely more and more on our generating capabilities. All the more reason to make sure we've addressed nuclear safety regulations. And the operating system's vulnerabilities, especially given all the latest incidents. What incidents? This is the first time hearing about it. No cause for alarm. We're dealing with it. But what's important is to reassure the public that Lexer can deliver and handle adversity. Well, as I said before you joined us, Becca, it's all about public perception. And that is your job. Lexer would fire me if they knew I was talking to you. Lexer, don't you work for Greater Midwest? I work for Lexer. I've been temporarily assigned to Midwest to upgrade their systems. Coffee, the black. Computer systems. Yeah. So how big a role do computers play in delivering power to customers? Bigger and bigger all the time. Good thing? Bad? Wait a second. We're off the record, right? Right? Sure. It's all about cutting corners and saving costs. And, and it's not just Lexer. All of these independent power companies are, they're adding computer systems to patch over problems. And what's wrong with that? In order for the system to function effectively, it, it, it needs to be relatively complex, okay? That makes it difficult to find qualified people to operate it. And if you try to make it easier to operate, it becomes vulnerable. To hackers. You said it, not me. Have they been having problems? I shouldn't even be talking no, to you. No, so hang on. We're just on background here, OK? We're going to call you an anonymous source inside Midwest. Absolutely not. We all know what happens to whistleblowers. They get movies made about them. The Insider. Yeah. That guy lost his family, his career, his health. Do you have a family? No. But I'm not ready to sacrifice a career I've been building for 15 years. That's one hell of a supercell forming out there. Wind speeds escalated 50% since our last reading three minutes ago. Are they still picking up, Roy? Surface pressure's at 93 millibars. Winds now at 85 knots. Jeez, this thing is just exploding. We need to change course or we're going to get caught up in it. But we need to stay close up, get accurate readings. God help anyone on the water down there. Another unexpectedly severe storm in the Gulf of Mexico forced emergency evacuations on eight oil rigs. Damages are estimated at over $2 billion, and total casualties are still unknown. How the hell did this happen? 
Andy, the wind patterns were there, but not these conditions. That vertical shear came out of nowhere. Our tornadoes destroy Las Vegas. We got hurricane force winds in the Gulf. We miss them both. What can I say? We were caught off guard. People are dead because we failed. Now, from now on, if a dog farts in Duluth, I expect somebody in this office to know about it. All right, everybody, get back to work. That brings the total to three oil and natural gas rigs destroyed by hurricane winds in the Gulf of Mexico, with 19 confirmed fatalities and another nine workers missing. God. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission issued a statement attempting to calm fears that the loss of these resources would death. Hey. Hi. You didn't have to wait up again. If I didn't, when would we spend time together? I'm glad to see you're conserving energy. I was trying to be romantic. So how is it going? Oh, I don't know. Everybody's working really hard. When this is over, they should give you a medal. <laughs> it's got to end sometime, right? Fall will be here soon. Cool, crisp air. And then winter. It's exactly what I'm worried about. You know, is it going to be the same thing in reverse? Months and months of sub-zero temperatures. I know you've been under a ton of stress lately, but is anything else going on? It's not like you to be so bleak. I don't know. I think I'm just tired. But just remember that your family is always here for you. Your son, your daughter, your wife. Thanks. How did your briefing with the president go? Oh, he yelled at me. Then he lectured me. And then he cussed me out. Oh, the press went to town on that third world power grid quote. <laughs> Shirley, what the hell were you thinking? Well, I hate to add to your burdens, but have you been keeping up with what's going on in the Gulf? Yes, the timing could not be any worse. The Weather Administration is saying the storm isn't letting up, which means they'll be closing more pipelines and refineries. Causing shortages as early as next week. Mm -hmm. You've been telling everyone it's a house of cards. Nobody ever wants to hear the sky is falling. No, sir, it's not just about energy or the environment. It's about civilization, whether or not we'll have one in 20 years. But so far, it's all been speculation. Do you think this is our new reality? It's exactly what I've been warning them about. A prolonged and widespread heat wave, coupled with drought and some natural calamity. And this really is our new reality. Where are the warning signs? Why couldn't we see these things coming? They've been having problems with the new satellite. Yeah, sure, let's blame it on the technology. It's true. We're only as good as our instruments. Wrong. Instruments are tools. They're just sharpened sticks. We're supposed to provide the brains. Well, the good news is it'll blow itself out when it runs out of water. I don't know. The storm is a lot steeper than your typical Gulf storm. Global warming is sure as hell changing the rules. Global warming is an unproven theory, Andy. And call it whatever you want. Something out there is changing our climate. We better start dealing with it. A lot more people are going to die. Don't go out there. The hell's the smell of baseball? are not gonna believe who I just saw. Leah is back with Brandon Wright. His name should be Brandon Wrong. <laughs> Any chick that dates a guy for his car is a sleaze bag. Eric, you're gonna get us kicked out of here. Security guards are all wimps, babe. Hey, Lindsay, come sit on my lap. Piss off, Wendell. Eric, don't. No one talks to you that way. Get out of my grill, man. The problem is I've got no cushion. 
We're at full capacity 24-7. We're already too dependent on Lexer, and all of our other suppliers are strapped. Well, what choice do we have? He who makes the power makes the rules. Excuse me. Yeah. Hi. Hey. I miss you. I... I know. You're married. Yes, I know that, too. I don't do this. I don't get involved with married men. Look, Jane and I have been together a long time. This is the first time this has ever happened. When can I see you again? Excuse me. I should take this. Hello? I just got a call from Lindsay. They're holding you down at the Old Town Police Precinct. What? She sounded upset. I asked if she was hurt. She said no. I'm on my way. I'll call you when I get her. OK, thanks. I got to go. A uh, little emergency. Is everything OK? Yeah, I'll tell you about it when I get back. So uh, what was the fight about? I don't want to talk about it. Lindsay, it's not going to cut it. Now tell me what happened. This guy said something to me. Eric got all mad. And... Eric. You didn't even know I had a boyfriend, did you? Yes. Do you know anything about my life? Yes. It's just hard to keep up with your boyfriends. I guess I'm going to have to start now that they're carting you off to jail. It wasn't my fault. Lindsay, I'm not your enemy. Now, I want to help you, but I can't help you unless you tell me what's going on. my fellow storm chasers as Tornado Tommy. What do you say we just get right to it, huh? Seeing a tornado is like having great sex. You never get enough, and it never lasts long enough. <laughs> nah, nah, don't get me wrong. I'm a scientist first and a hunter second. I used to work for the National Weather Administration, but I couldn't stand sitting behind a desk and not being here. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no place on Earth that has seen more tornadoes than where you're sitting right now. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, certain atmospheric conditions need to be present. But when they are, these suckers can drop from the sky without the slightest warning. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I just love that part. The wind you just felt is one one thousandth the strength of an average sized tornado, <laughs> which means they're very dangerous. So you're going to have to follow my rules. Now, let's talk about the Fujita scale. Named after meteorologist Theodore... Fujita. You guessed it, Fujita. <laughs> the Fujita scale allows us to measure the severity of a tornado relative to the damage that it causes. For instance, an F1 snaps trees and breaks windows. F2 uproots trees, blows away small structures. The F3 flips over cars, causes damage to wood frame structures. F4 flattens those structures. And the F5 is the strongest ever recorded at over 300 miles per hour velocity, picks up cars and throws them into the next county. Now, I need for everyone to sign those releases. The Midwest grid runs on an extremely complex operating system called Helios 9. Okay, that makes the system very secure, not very user-friendly. So you're in there implementing ways to dumb it down. Yeah, I'm at the top of my field. Okay, I make a lot of money. Lexer doesn't want to have to put a bunch of guys like me on salary. They would rather hire some kid out of college, put him on a six-week course, and turn him into an expert. And the risks are? I mean, anyone with a PC can, can send a Trojan horse, worm, a virus, you name it. To do what? It tells the transmission lines that it's overloaded, OK? That throws the circuit breakers, and then, oops, your lights go out. And the people at Lexacorp know this? Of course they know it. How much of the grid is vulnerable? The whole thing. Imagine the consequences of a terrorist shutting down power in this country for one week. Every piece of refrigerated food goes bad. We can't drink the water. Gas pumps don't work. Hospitals shut down. Stock market crashes. National security is at risk. Yeah. I need you to tell me about the problems that you're having right now. I can. 
Not yet. You want us to tell our viewers their electricity might suddenly just all go away based on the speculations of what? Some anonymous source? Are you nuts? This is about LexorCorp trying to cut corners by using unsecured computer technology. You want to take on one of the richest companies in the region without getting verifiable facts or on the record source. You think I'm making this up? No, I think you're trying to be some kind of a hero. But we really need hero reporters who keep people calm, grounded, and informed. So the world could be coming apart at the seams, but it's our job to keep people calm and grounded? Do you want to scare the city out of its mind? Do you? Then you go ahead. You tell them they cannot depend on their electricity. But if it's the truth... Then you get me verifiable facts and on-the-record sources. <laughs> Good night, nurse! That one had wings! Bottom of the fifth, Chicago looking to equalize. He's currently batting 235 and looking to... And Chicago brings us into a tight... Whoa! The lights have gone out at Wrigley Field. Umpires having a hard enough time calling balls and strikes in the best of conditions, so our game will come to an unexpected stop here while they try to figure out what happened. Well, let's hope they fix this power situation quickly, because I know the Cubs fans and they will not be patient for long. You know, I can, I can hear the old-timer saying, told you so, they should never have put lights in Wrigley Field. Mitch, it's Wrigley. They will say that many times here in Chicago. Mitch Benson. Yeah, we just heard, uh, according to our computers, they should have power. Well, well, wait a minute. Look out, the lights are back on. Yeah, no, we didn't do anything here. Well, of course I'll look into it. I'll have to come back on. You tell me. I looked at the variable stuff that you worked up for us last night. It was all right. Better than your coffee. I didn't make the coffee. I... Could you just take a look at these for me? <sighs> yeah, I guess so. Wait a minute. It's the last 24 hours? Those are from the last 12. It's the kind of pattern you'd see in late fall. It's way too early for this Arctic low-pressure system to slip down this low. I checked it and rechecked it. Do me a favor, will you? Contact our weather people in Alaska. We got some good spotters up there. See if we can get some eyeball reports. Sure. Uh, something else, uh, listen, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, what's your name? Sabrina Rogers. Keep an eye on this thing for me. Let me know if it's heading our way. Andy, the Doppler's showing extreme instability over West Texas. We got him on the phone now. Yeah. Andy. You see what's going on out here in Amarillo? These winds are building upwards of 90 miles per hour. This is an adorable bev. He already has six of them. Well, his aunt just bought him number seven, a clean one for each day of the week, right? I guess. <laughs> you know, you being pregnant has really made me think about why I haven't had a child yet. You've just made other choices up to this point in your life. Yeah, but if I don't make this choice to have a child, will I regret it? You know what? I admired what you've done. You followed your dream. And you tell the stories that people need to hear. No, absolutely not, because you, you got to make sure that the program's reading the voltage levels correctly before they get stepped Gentlemen, up. Gentlemen, would you excuse us for a moment? Is this about Wrigley Field? I'm not concerned with that. Someone left 35,000 people sitting in the, in the dark. How can you Look, not get... Look, your job is to make the new system work. Let us handle security. 
How's it going at Midwest? We're above 80%. We have uh, six more hospital generators to bring online. And when will it reach 100? Next week? Well, probably the week after. That system is an essential piece of the puzzle. Once it's in place, Midwest will be even more dependent on us. Not to mention we'll be able to shed another 100 non-essential workers. Keep on it. Could the power outage of last night's game have been caused by a hacker? Yeah, uh, the event's under investigation. Could it be terrorists? Uh, I'm not going to speculate. Is there at least a possibility that it could have been caused by a hacker? It's not our policy to comment on investigations that are ongoing. What are you afraid of? Ma'am, I'm not afraid of anything. I'm trying to answer your question, and you're trying to sensationalize the story for television ratings. Now, when I say we can't comment, it means we can't comment. If there is at least a suspicion that a hacker is sabotaging our power system, don't you think the public has a right to know? It would be absolutely uh, irresponsible. A potential hacker is one of several theories under discussion, but it would be irresponsible at this point to let the public think that was the most credible explanation for what occurred. And have your employer risk losing its customers. She's trying to answer your question. What is it with you? You jump all over her. Can we hear it from another reporter, please? How long will it be until we have power? It's impossible to say at this point. We are doing our best and hopefully it will be uh, very soon. Yeah, we gotta let Northern Illinois know that they're getting severe thunderstorms the next 24 hours. You don't think it's premature? premature. I wish we'd been premature in Las Vegas. The Gulf of West Texas. Get it out on the line now. I gotta call Mitch Benson. Hey, Andy, give me some good news. Tell me we got rain on the way. <laughs> rain and lightning, lots of it. It could get very nasty along lower Lake Michigan. I wish we could find a way to feed that energy into our grid. Yeah, it's called research and development, Mitch. Yeah, well, we're lucky when we get a new coffee pot down here. Thanks, Andy. I'll call my operators. Looks like Chicago's gonna get blasted. This is really accelerating. We'll have to revise our estimates. They need the rain. Yeah, but not all at once. I shouldn't have left Laura. The National Weather Administration is forecasting severe thunderstorms in the Chicago area. Mom, is something wrong? No. No, I, I, I mean, um, I mean, I should call your father and tell him uh, about the storm. Hi. Um, would you tell Mitch Benson that his wife's on the line? Hi. Um, did you hear the warning? Yes. Are you coming home? I gotta stay with the ship till this is over. Are Garth and Lindsay home? Lindsay's on her way home now. From where? When's she gonna get there? With her, it could be 10 minutes, it could be an hour, I don't know. Will you check in later? Of course I will. Okay. Bye. I was just thinking about Jeff. No, I'd rather not think about Jeff. That makes me too nervous. It's what he loves. I know, but don't your priorities change when you're about to become a parent? Can you picture your brother at a desk job? Yeah. <laughs> OK, Mom, I think it's about time we stepped away from the window. I hope that's not your overnight bag for the hospital. No, I just packed that in case I have to go to my parents. Well, you let me drive you out there, right? Honestly? It's just a last resort. I know my mother will make me crazy. Oh, wow. I hope that doesn't scare him. Let's cover his ears.
That was an hour and a half ago. There was traffic. We talked about you not seeing as much of Eric. He was nice enough to give me a ride home. God, what do you want? I better unplug your computer. Mom, unplug the phone. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. The TV's not. Chicago Air is closed at this time. We've been hit by lightning. We're trying to assess our damage. Copy that. Advise us of your condition as soon as possible. I've never seen anything like this. What the hell just happened? Our plant took a direct hit. How bad? Knocked out generators one through six and damaged seven. Nine and ten. How long until we can get them operational? Christmas, if we're lucky. What do you think? We can't get around it. I have to go straight through it. I'm gonna get fried. Tower, this is Oceanic 762 Heavy, requesting straight in 27 left. 762 Heavy, slow your descent and stand by. Flaps 15, set speed 210 knots. Flaps 15. Speed 210. Prepare for emergency landing. The flight attendants on the lower deck will be directing you to the two exits at the front of the plane. All eyeglasses, neckties, false teeth must be removed. <laughs> Here we can see half the city is dark. How bad is it? Our plant just went out of commission. They're telling me something like four months to get it repaired. Good news for Lexer, I guess. Yeah, bad news for us. Our other suppliers are all overloaded, and now Lexer's our only source. Which is how Craig Schultz likes it. Go to flaps 20. Flaps 20. Flaps not responding. We're still at 15. Go throttle back. We're at stall speed now. O'Hare Tower, this is Oceanic 762, and I'm declaring an emergency. We're fast and heavy, and we need to land now. I cannot clear you to land at this time. Repeat, I cannot clear you. going down. I've got a warning flag on the nose gear. Is that for real or did the lightning knock out our sensors? Doesn't matter. We're going in anyway. We're too damn hot. Not if the gear holds. 400. 300. 200. warning from the National Weather Administration, but very quickly exploded into a storm for the record books. Over 3,000 lightning flashes per hour, more than ever recorded in a single storm, have already caused countless fires and destroyed one municipal power plant in a city already ravaged by weeks of record heat. We've got crews working around the clock, but the best case scenario is three, maybe four months to get our primary plant back online. What horrible timing. For you or for us? Both. We have a responsibility to our customers, regardless of these unforeseen acts of God. When Lake Michigan Electric had a problem, you made sure they kept running. Now it's Midwest's turn. And there is no relationship we value more highly than our relationship with Midwest. 
I appreciate that, but you also have a contractual obligation. Mitch, are you worried that we would take advantage of your misfortune? Your obligation is to make a profit. Ours is to make sure that our customers' needs are met. And they will be. You'll get your power. At what price? Well, I guess that's it for now. Thank you. He's a hothead. I can see him complaining to the state utilities regulator. Our Belmont and Jarvis reactors are operating at what capacity? No, we're already exceeding federal limits. We'll push them further. We're here to sell power. When France had that horrible heat wave, their government allowed reactors to operate past temperature safety limits. While risking the thermal death of several major rivers and lakes. I can't see the feds relaxing their guidelines anytime soon. We're in a crisis. So to keep people's lights on, we'll just have to do what we have to do. After 72 days of drought and a six-week heat wave, we have rain showers in Chicago, which, among other benefits, have helped firefighters deal with the numerous fires set off by last night's intense lightning storm. That's it. Keep it up, Pete. Finally got some positive news to but report, I should huh? also mention that emergency services are stretched to the breaking point, both in terms of manpower and resources. She just had to do that to me, didn't she? Hey. Your dinner's in the fridge. Thanks. How was your day? Other than the rain, that was nice for a change. It was basically miserable. Kids okay? Lindsay and I fought like cats and dogs. And Garth was gone most of the day at camp. Yeah, well, my day was fun. We uh, lost our only generating plant, and that makes us almost completely dependent on Lexer. Is that the company that Becca Kearns works for? Yeah, yeah, she's their uh, senior VP for public relations. Attractive woman. Professional, smart. Is she married? I don't know. I don't think so. She's more than attractive, really. She's beautiful, don't you think? What do you mean? I think you know what I mean. You were never very good at lying. Respect me and tell me the truth. Sorry. I'm really sorry. How long? Not long, not even a month. And this is the first time. Are you planning to leave? No. I don't know. I haven't I haven't thought anything through. Well, do that much for me, would you? Think things through and let me be the first to know. I won't tell the kids, but I want you to sleep in the guest room. Yeah, I'm getting some very promising signs. Huh. Looks like a big unstable system. Head straight for us. Yes, sir, Ree, the storm gods are serving up a feast today. Yeah, this is Goodman. Are you tracking this down there? Tommy, where are you? Somewhere outside Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Got a real feeling about this one, Andy. Yeah, me too. Have you been drinking? Hell no, I'm giving four paying customers the thrill ride of their lives. <laughs> I just thought I'd tell you, buddy. Say, look, Andy, I am staring straight down the barrel of this one here. You want me to spot it for you? Yeah. Yeah, you be my eyes. But, Tom? Yeah, Andy? I got a bad feeling about this one. Don't get yourself killed. Well, well that's kind of up the storm guns now, isn't it? <laughs> Amy Harkin. I saw your report last night. What happened to the other story? I hit a brick wall. My boss won't take on Lexacorp without an on-the-record source. So I lose my job? You become the hero reporter for breaking the biggest power scandal since Enron? I don't want you to lose your job. Forget it. Who's taking on Lexicor? I am. You surprised? I just gotta get my source out of the closet. Your source? Sounds a little cloak and dagger. This could be the big one. Yeah, well, let's hope it's not the big one that gets you fired. I couldn't lie. I just 
couldn't. How did you find out? You don't think it wasn't me? Well, there are only two people who know about this. How could you think? I guess you don't know me that well. I mean, I'm not accusing you. Why I just... would I tell your wife to break up your marriage? I don't want that. So what are we doing? I don't know. I hadn't planned on. Oh, well, now it's really complicated. What do you want to do? You know, I want to rewind to that night three weeks ago and. Summer's no big deal around here, but snow? We haven't seen snow in August since, since I don't know when. Thanks so much for your help. I really appreciate it. Southern Kansas first. Wichita. Got to advise them to warn the outlying communities. Excuse me. Very heavy rainfall tonight. What are you doing? I just wanted to talk to Andy. You do realize he's a little busy right now? Seriously, if you distract him for five minutes and he misses getting an alert out on time, you realize what the ramifications of that are? I know, but he told me... He was being nice to you because he admires your youthful enthusiasm. But right now, he's got more important things to do, okay? Make sure they're in touch with state police and local spotters. We want everyone on the lookout. I have some new information. Andy, I'm sorry. I told her not to bother you. <laughs> oh, no, that's, a, that's all right. See what she's got, all right, Chris? Sure. Can you come with me? I just spoke to a bartender near Calgary. His thermometer is at freezing. That's 30 degrees below normal. You were just an intern. Try to remember that. But Andy looked at my research. He was just humoring you. Now sit down at your desk, do whatever it is you do, and stop trying to grandstand. I... Now! And if I see you step out of line again, I will personally see to it that your internship here is over. Take a look at this storm top. It just keeps rising. 50,000 feet, 55,000 feet. How high can it go? So, does she have anything we can use? There was nothing there. She made a lot of technical errors. Her presumptions were all wrong. Really? Huh. Power's back on for most of the city. Looks like Lex is delivering. We should be, considering what they're charging us. Mitch, you got a second? Sure. I know uh, you've got a lot on your plate now, but it's, it's my responsibility to tell you my concerns about the system that Lex was having me reprogram. Talk to me. I'm not a fan. You know the virus issues we've been having. Mitch, call from the operator at Fort Sheridan. They're saying it's urgent. We'll come back to the same. Thanks. Yeah. What? When? All right, I'll call you back. Apparently, the uh, Jarvis reactor has been dumping excess water into the river. They gotta be operating beyond restrictions. Exactly. Hello. Do you know what's going on with the Fort Jarvis reactor? Good day to you, too. Is this how your guys are solving our power problem? As an employee of the company, you know I can't comment on something like this. Come on, Becca. If they're pushing this reactor beyond federal guidelines, we're all gonna end up with the Justice Department breathing down our necks. Mitch, I will not have this conversation with you. That's right. I need to be having this conversation with Craig Schultz. Thanks very much. Hey, what's the matter? I've been bummed out all day. It's nothing. I'm fine. I know what you need. Big guzzle. We'll all get one. We don't have enough money. That's not a problem. I'll be right back. Dude, dude, we don't have any money. We had no money. So, we got some. I can't believe you guys did that. Hey, 
It's no big deal. Look, the cops are spread all over the city. It's cake. <laughs> now that is one big, beautiful supercell there, folks. He's really brewing. See that? Starting to rope. <laughs> Come on, baby, do us a little dance. <laughs> Let's see you shake, rattle, and roll. You know, we really don't know that much about tornadoes. That's because so few people have actually been this close and lived to talk. Nice, <laughs> man. Oh, don't worry. That's the reason we approach these babies from the southeast, because they tend to move in a northwesterly direction. Except this one. Let's get back in the truck. Up down, Junior. We're moving on. Come on. I'll take us in closer for a better wind reading. Maybe there are better jobs for a new dad. I'm going as fast as I can! Harkin of WNUW Chicago walking alongside what was a favorite destination for many Chicagoans looking for a cooling break from the record-breaking temperatures we've been experiencing in recent weeks. But today is a very different story. The riverbank here at the Jarvis Nuclear Power Generating Plant is a devastating scene. Superheated runoff from the plant has killed what appears to be many thousands of fish. With me is Randy Krieger, a Jarvis Beach resident. Mr. Krieger, when did you become aware of the problem? The first thing I noticed was the smell, which about knocked me off my feet. And then I looked out at the water, and it was bubbling like a, like a pot of boiling water. Now, I've always said this reactor here is like a Chernobyl waiting to happen. Thanks very much for your time. That was great. Thanks. You know what's going to make you cut that Chernobyl off? OK, superheated water instead of radioactivity. Mm -hmm. You know what? Still a major environmental screw up. Well, look, you don't need to convince me. Let's go. Come People's attentions are focused on three things. The heat, the heat, and the heat. What, you think it's just gonna go away? I just don't think we should overreact. Okay, Becca, ball's in your court. And our position is? It was an accident, unforeseeable, deeply regrettable, and a direct consequence of the overwhelming demand for power. You know they're gonna see right through that. And it's your job to create so much opacity that they don't. Opacity? Smoke. Here we go. Shirley, how are you? What the hell is going on there? I think we have everything under control here. You damn well better. You've already violated about 50 federal laws. We are in a crisis environment. Remember from France had that horrendous heat wave? Are you really trying to use 15,000 dead French people to justify your crime? Whoa, 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 whoa. Crime is a pretty strong word. Don't do this with me, Schultz. 
I'll send my regulators down there right now to seize your files. I don't care who your friends are in Washington. Your company has crossed a threshold. I'm going to make sure you pay. I just love to watch you beat up on those power company boys. Thank you. This is awkward. Yeah, it is. Look, I'm sorry, but I need advice. The way I see it, your company is asking you to stand up and lie in front of the whole world. Are you comfortable doing that? Mitch. Look, I'm sorry. It's just so damn complicated. You and I are involved. You work for our main supplier. Don't give me that conflict of interest crap. I need help. I have two choices. Do my job or resign. And if I resign, it's going to draw attention and they'll come after me anyway. Either way, it makes her a hard look in the mirror, doesn't it? This isn't just about me, you know. Schultz is holding all the cards. If he's pushed, he'll shut down the plants for, quote, repairs and hold just about every city in the Midwest hostage. You shouldn't let him get away with that. Lexer wants the public to know that an intensive effort is underway to repair the damage hey, and make sure nothing like this ever happens again. Keep in mind, no one was physically hurt during the event, which was, and let me stress this, an unforeseeable and deeply regrettable accident for which Lexer and its affiliates sincerely apologize. What did this used to be? <laughs> Mom? Hi, honey. Are you worried about the nuclear thing? Because they told us at camp today that it's not like Three Mile Island. It's killing the fish, but not the people. Hi. You're home before dark? Shocking. I've been here for three hours. Do you need anything, Mom? I can run to the store and make dinner. No, honey, thanks. I'm fine. Still there? Oh, I had to input weather logs going back 30 years to run these computer models. Put up the satellite picture over the Rockies. Put them side by side. Yeah, that polar jet stream is the strongest I've ever seen. How'd you make out with our spotters up in Alaska? You told me it was snowing on the North Mackenzie River, most ever for August. The worst thing it can be in my job is an alarmist. It's just the two of us. Alarm me. I got this massive Arctic low pushing down over us, fueled by the polar jet stream. You got this Gulf storm pushing up from the south. That's fueled by the tropical gesture. You don't think they'd actually converge around Chicago? Roger, copy that. We're being retasked. They want us to head north to the Canadian border in the Upper Lake Superior region. That's nuts. All the action's a thousand miles to the south. Apparently not. Something big must be brewing for them to divert us. Thanks, Raj. I owe you big. Jace. Hey, Jace. Come on, we're Where are we going? You remember that source I told you about? You talked to him out of the closet? He was telling me that our power system, the grid, the transmission, it's all vulnerable. Someone's been hacking into it. And if he's right, the whole thing will come crashing down. So this is your big story? And Walt's not going to let me put it on the air unless we get that source on tape. And he doesn't want to show his face because then he becomes a story. Isn't this a dilemma for you? It's his dilemma, not mine. I mean, this is where you need to stop and think for a minute. I mean, what's it going to do to his life? Chase, what's it going to do to our life if there's a massive blackout? I do what you're asking me to do. What happens? You win some journalistic award. I'm finished. The long arm of Lexer will reach out and crush me. That's paranoia. No, that's fact. They'll do everything in their power to discredit me, and you know that. No, Dan, you speak out. You're going to wake a lot of people up. Don't underestimate the collective intelligence. I can't help you. I'm sorry. You said that Schultz is making decisions that'll put a lot of people in harm's way. Well, you know what? You're making decisions, too. You don't speak out? Where's the difference? It's a complex and, and, and multifaceted issue. I mean, the whole system needs to be modernized, OK? But they just, they just want to patch it over with cheap fix solutions. And, in the meantime, the existing energy sources are on, on a collision course with the environment. Coal, for example, 
It's relatively cheap, but, but it's dirty. They say that, that retrofitting plants is too expensive. Fine, but nuclear power is dangerous to the environment. In the meantime, the American people just keep buying more, you know, using more, demanding more and more power. Well, when are we going to acknowledge that we can't keep going on this way? Potentially a risk to hackers? Well, we're, we're, we're beyond potentially a risk. I mean, the risk is imminent. And there is a technological solution, but no one wants to hear about that. I mean, all that is required is to develop intrusion detection systems, which are capable of, of operating in the real-time environment of Helios 9 with all control commands completely encrypted. Then you need experts to create the system and to maintain it, and they're saying that's too expensive. Excuse me, I, I need to talk to Chris. Thanks. You got a sec? Yeah, sure. I'm uh, still the boss around here for the next uh, 53 hours, right? I guess, technically. No, 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 not technically. Literally, I'm the boss. I asked you to look at that new intern's data. Andy, for crying out loud, you she's an amateur. You work for me, Chris. You understand? You work for me. I asked you to do something. You didn't do it. I just had a chance to look at that kid's stuff. It could be very significant. Look, I get it, Andy. She's an attractive girl. It's nice to have her attention. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. And I'm going to say this just one more time. As long as I'm running this place, we play by my rules. Do you understand? Yeah. You understand? Yes. Sabrina Rogers. Yes? I want you to make a presentation on this Arctic Low situation to the entire staff in 10 minutes. What? You got 10 minutes. I want you in the front row, taking notes. Something's wrong. These upper air temperatures are what we'd see in December, and they're dropping. Well, could it be a glitch in our instruments? I doubt it. Let's turn around and take another reading to be sure. Copy that. All right, copy that dash seven out. Eh. Dash seven took three different temperature readings. It says the temperature in the upper atmosphere is 30 degrees below normal. Lake Superior is running 13 degrees warmer than normal. Same conditions that sank the Edmund Fitzgerald. But that was in November. We're still in August. Which means that this system that you just so thoroughly briefed us all on could come barreling down the Great Lakes. How far? All the way, southern Lake Michigan. So what you're saying is that within the next 48 hours, a hurricane could actually hit Chicago? If these systems converge, it won't be just a hurricane. It'll be a superstorm. Worse than anything we've ever seen. What's up? That's what I want to know. What's up with Mom and Dad? What do you mean? Well, they haven't been talking to each other. And I've caught Mom crying twice. Look, I don't think we should get involved. So there is something going on. Tell me. They're just having some issues. Like serious issues? They'll probably get divorced. Our lives will be ruined. My boyfriend's a criminal. I'm seriously thinking about running away to California and living on a beach. Develop intrusion detection systems, which are capable of operating in the, in the real-time environment of Helios 9, with all the control commands completely encrypted. What the hell is he talking about? Just be patient. These companies, I mean, they're rushing to the edge of the cliff in the name of cost effectiveness. How cost effective is it going to be when the whole system collapses? Ordinary people need to take responsibility. I mean, power is, is expensive. You realize that people pay less for power per day than they would by 
you know, by, by ordering a hamburger and a Coke for lunch. Now you see, he gives us a ton of great stuff like that. We can break it up and run it as a week-long feature. It's coming off like some kind of wacky manifesto. He doesn't sound credible. Are you kidding? He's the head systems operator for Lexacorp. He's one of the top guys in his field. This is not the science channel. I'm not willing to pit this station against an entire army of Lexacorp lawyers over what? Some disgruntled employee? You're afraid. This has absolutely nothing to do with his credibility. It has to do with you being scared to take on the big companies. Amy, come on. When you're in my job, and you have a parent company breathing down your neck to get them ratings and limit their exposure, we'll see what kind of editorial choices that you make. Down London. It's Amy. He didn't go for it. What does that mean? Bottom line, my boss doesn't have the guts to take on Lexacorp. But I do, okay? Hello? Hello? <sighs> Listen to me, okay? We are on the same team here. What team's that? Jeff? Hey, where are you? About 10,000 feet over a town called Escanaba in Upper Michigan. Isn't that a long way from where you're supposed to be? Amy, I gotta keep this short. There's a major storm about to hit the north shore of Lake Superior. If it stays on this track, it could be down there within 24 hours. Well, I haven't heard anything on the weather alert. But you will. It's a monster. When's the last time you checked in with Laura? This morning. Oh, I just tried her. She must be out. I'm gonna send her to her parents' place. It's far enough off the lake. All right, well, you want me to drive her out there? No, that's okay. There's time. And Amy, listen to me. I know you're gonna want to report on this storm, but be careful. It's looking pretty bad, especially near the lake. Hey, it's me. Uh, where are the kids? Garth's at camp, and Lindsay's out. I just got a heads up from the weather people. Apparently, there's a huge storm heading our way, uh, possibly two. Bigger than the last one? Apparently, yeah. I just think that we should round up the kids and keep them at home, at least until I find out a little bit more. Are you coming home? I can't right now. Why not? Jane, I have responsibilities. To who? Take it easy. Listen, if it gets bad, I'll bring you guys down here. There's a shelter under the building, and we'll all be safe here. Will she be there, too? Jane, this isn't the time. I'm just scared. I know. I mean, the state we're in, I don't think we can make it through a major calamity. By we, do you mean the power grid or you and me? I'll get the kids. We'll be here waiting for you to call. OK, thanks. I'm going to pick up your sister, and I want you to come home right away, OK? What's up? Is it about Dad? No, Dad's fine. I'll explain everything when you get here. I love you. I love you too, Mom. Bye. It's just not feeling right to me. What's not feeling right, hmm? Tell me what I did. It's just, I'm not. Can't we just be friends? No, forget it. I don't want to be friends. Look, if you're telling me that this is over, then get out of my face. Lindsay. I want you to come home with me now. Mama. Hey, look. Lindsay, let's go. She just, like, totally dissed you, dude. Mother, you were, like, totally humiliating me. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll explain it in the car. The bank. We might need some emergency cash. Emergency? What's going on? There's a storm coming. Hi, please leave a message for us. Hi, Garth. I'm stopping at the bank with Lindsay. We'll be on our way home in just a few minutes, OK? Bye. You know, your father told me they invented those timer things at Disneyland. It's psychological. People don't get so impatient waiting if they think they know how long it's going to take. Do you see?
see what I'm seeing? Tell Mitch we need him right away. to my parents. Uh, Jeff called said there was a storm coming down from Canada. What kind of storm? You, you've got to be kidding. Oh, would you look at that? They're telling us we have to buy our places and the whole building is falling apart. Lines are overloaded. This line was fine two minutes ago. Now look at it. All right, give it a second. The backup power will kick in. It's not responding to commands. Come on. Come on. We got multiple failures across the city. Call emergency services. Where's the backup? It's dead. Nothing. Brian, go downstairs and fire the generator by hand. If we can't stay in business, nobody will. What are we going to do? The door's locked, and we can't climb out. So I guess we wait until someone turns the power back on. You know what's happening? Yeah, I'm kicking this. Tornadoes have knocked down initially. There's been a massive power failure in Chicago. No phones, no television, no radio. Perfect timing. Three million people about to get clobbered. Now we got no way to warn them? We'll uplink your report to the satellite of the emergency power. Most of Chicago may not see you, but the rest of the world will. I'm ready. Now listen to me. I want you to provide information. Paint a picture. Let us see what's happening through your eyes. No speculations, no theories, and nothing alarmist. I got it. We're ready when you are. Good. At this moment, Chicago is a city without power. Trains, traffic lights, bridges, markets, restaurants, homes, everything has come to a grinding halt. People are wandering around in various states of confusion and shock. And on top of this apparent citywide blackout, sources at the National Weather Administration have told me there's a major storm making its way down from the Great Lakes. Anybody home? Once my house are down, I can't get through to my family. Lex is generating power, but our grid won't accept it. This doesn't conform to any of the outage patterns we've trained for. I need a bigger picture of what's going on. Well, you won't get it from these computers. Anybody seen Dan London? I don't think he's in the building. Try him at Lexer. This is exactly what he predicted. These doors are automated. In an emergency, they're programmed to shut and lock. We can't get out? Well, not till someone gets the juice back on, which ought to be any minute now. So please, everyone, just remain calm. Is there an override? No, sir. We can't do anything from inside the bank. I said I was sorry. Give me another chance, OK? Oh, forget it, Eric. We're just not right for each other. What is it, another guy? Hey. What are you doing? Get away from me. Take his gun. I'm not doing Get that. Get it! I'm telling you, there's no way these lines can be overloaded. Override the computer and do it the old-fashioned way. New system won't allow it. 
If we can't generate power or get it from our providers, we've got to get it somehow. 50 calls have come in from power operators in Illinois and three other states reporting a major failure in the Chicago area. Is it cascading or are they containing it? Well, there hasn't been enough time to enforce the new requirements. No one really knows how well protected the grids are. We know they haven't finished safeguarding the interconnects, which means the whole country is vulnerable. Now, outages in northern Illinois and central Midwest were just reported. Thanks, Barbara. Mitch Benson is calling from Greater Midwest Electric in Chicago on line one. I told him you'd return, but he's insisting on talking to you. Yes, it's Shirley Abbott. We heard about the blackout. Well, it's too early to know if it's a hacker, but it's a strong possibility. I've already talked to the FBI and Homeland Security. They're on it. Tell me what else you need right now. Well, as you know, we've got uh, bad weather coming, and uh, we've got to get power to coordinate rescue and shelter operations. How can I help? Well, it's got to come from outside generating sources, which probably means twisting a lot of arms in a short period of time. Well, I know something about twisting arms. Let me line up my ducks, and I'll get back to you. What can I do for you? Hello, it's Shirley. I need him. No, it's not just about Chicago anymore. It's about the whole country. Since 5.02 this afternoon, the city of Chicago and surrounding areas have been without power. Millions of citizens are stuck in traffic jams, elevators, and buildings with electronic security systems. With phone lines down, cell phones out of service, and only battery-operated televisions and radios viable, one of the big questions is, how will citizens, how will our friends and family be able to receive emergency information? This is a city in crisis. Everyone to the back. Move it. Confidence you want to get shot through. Get going. In the front, get down. All of you, get down. Get down. Get down. Winds at 160 knots, waves in excess of 15 meters, precipitation extremely heavy. Well, this thing's off the charts. Hey, has anything this big ever hit Chicago? Not since they've been keeping records. The polar jet stream says at these levels this could be a category five, or worse. These, these southern systems are still on the same track. Talk to somebody. Yo, Andy, talk to me. Where's this thing headed? Well, the satellite says north, northeast, toward St. Louis. Well, they say the bird never lies. <laughs> it did in Galveston. Look, Andy, you got to let that go, man. Quit beating yourself up about that. 64 people, Tommy. Yeah, well, a lot more people would have died if that storm had hit land. You made the only call you could. Yeah. No, I should have listened to my gut. Yeah, well, if you're asking my gut, this is something we ain't never seen before. I don't think it's gonna stop anytime soon. Yeah, my gut says the same. I hope we're both wrong. Keep me posted, pal. You got it, buddy. Okay, folks, in the line. Don't feel you got your money's worth. I gotta help out a buddy and follow this thing till it blows itself out. Uh, Y'all catch a bus from here. Sayonara. To give you some sense of how this is affecting people on a local level, we're at the Lake Vista Emergency Center, where emergency personnel have been dispatched to rescue victims who've been injured or trapped due to the blackout. With public transportation stopped, local hospitals are short on workers. Joining me now is John Tenner, an EMT with the Lake Vista Medical Center. We've seen a large number of patients come in with blackout-related injuries. Uh, we're asking any qualified medical doctors, nurses, technicians to please make your way into the city. We really need you. I would add that all emergency workers are needed in the city. And now we have reports confirming another threat. A major storm is making its way south on Lake Michigan. This storm could quickly grow to catastrophic hurricane strength. For those of you who can hear this report, Listen closely to emergency broadcast advisories, and if advised to evacuate, move immediately to low-rise inland structures or pre-designated public shelters before you're cut off by flood water. If you are not ordered to leave your home, take refuge in a small interior first floor room away from windows, doors, and flying debris. Once the hurricane hits land, avoid downed electrical wires and be alert for tornadoes. It's an eerie sight. The Chicago skyline, 
and tonight it's dark. Dark and filled with dread as we go into what could well be the longest night the people of this great city have ever lived through.